and welcome to Out of the Dark Room on Adorama TV. I'm Ruth Medjber and today I'm joined by Monica Fabiancek, who specialises in wet plate collodion photography. Monica, thank you so much for joining me on the show today. Um, I, I love what you do and none of it is very new digital techniques, is that right? I started to take photographs when I was in a primary school. Um, and it was uh, present in my life for a long time as a hobby. Um, uh, but I studied architecture and um, during, during studying I, I wasn't very involved in photography. Uh, but uh, when uh, in, my, in my first uh, job, architectural job, when I, when I uh, got my first salary, the first thing I did, I, I got myself a, a camera. And after doing researches on, uh, on the internet, I discovered um, these old historical techniques and among them wet plate collodion technique from the 19th century, in, in, uh, invented in the 1851. And I just fell in love um, and I just wanted to know how you can create this type of an image. I was amazed by John Coffer, an American photographer who's uh, basically, he's, he's running a farm, he's living in a, um, you know, a log cabin without electricity and he's uh, creating uh, works um, with wet plate and he's providing workshops to, to this young people. This is a people. present day photographer? Yes, it wow. is. Wow! Yes, yes. Without electricity in a log cabin? Yes, cool. yes. <laughs> and, um, and I just thought, wow, you know, in this crazy life mm. uh, that we have today, uh, in this rush and in this uh, digital photography um, and uh, millions of shots and you know I just thought that this is this is amazing and yeah. that was like wow you know I, I would like to try this <laughs> uh, so I did a workshop and I just fall in love you know it's a very addictive process it's very time consuming it's absolutely beautiful you have to have a patience you have to be the right person for this mm. uh, process because it takes time um, to create one photograph, uh, you need at least like half an hour. Okay, once you uh, assuming that you've got everything uh, ready and set up, um, uh, so it's it's absolutely amazing. It's like rediscovering photography um, again, and it's always this um, um, uncertainty of if the shots gonna work, or if yeah. the chemicals work together. You know because if. I can't imagine it's very practical really, is it then, to apply, you know, as a profession, as a job. It has to be a hobby. I mean, I don't think I could say to some of my clients, it's like, oh yeah, I'll come and shoot your advertising campaign on wet plate. It's too, it's too it's, uncertain. Uh, yeah, well, it will suit some of the um, jobs, basically, yeah. you know, you can, like, I took uh, portraits um, on wet plate, com commissioned portraits. Uh, I would uh, shoot uh, wedding portraits, but it would be a separate session. Like it's not a wedding shot on the wedding day. Oh, okay. okay. I was trying to figure that out from your website. I was like, how do you set up a wet plate, a large format camera to shoot a that wedding? Would be, that yeah. would be a bit so, difficult. So when you're doing uh, wedding photography, which is such a unique way of having your wedding portrait captured, right? Because they're like one of a kind yes. uh, prints. Yes. So do you invite the couple to come back on another yes. day? Yes, that's how that would work. That's yes. fantastic. Yes. So original. Uh, yes, and I'm also... Um, you know, I do have a lot of equipment that is just DIY equipment, and I've got a very, um, uh, very helpful and uh, skillful husband who can make different boxes and things that are used in these processes, basically. Um, so we also would uh, do some nice um, cases, wooden cases for oh. this type of uh, photograph. So you would get an image in a wooden case that you can open, look at, and hide. It's all very tactile, isn't it? It is, yes. It's very yes. bespoke, one of a kind tactile yes. pieces. It's not just um, the wet plate that you do, though, is it? You do lots of various types of printing. Yes, uh, I'm in love with, with all these historical um, processes. I really am very interested in primitive photography, you know, because as I said, at some stage I was thinking, oh, I need to get another better gear, you know, a better digital camera. And then when I discovered that you can really um, create photographs and prints and uh, by using just an ordinary uh, 
kitchen stock like uh, baking soda or coffee. Uh, you can you can develop films with with coffee basically and vitamin C. <laughs> Sorry, it's called, what? <laughs> yes, <laughs> yes, it's called caffeinol. So the developer made with just a freshly brewed brewed coffee, you know. Uh, and, okay, and I, you might have to explain that to one another time because that sounds yes. mad. So, so and and you, when you realize that you really can build your own camera, not not necessarily just a pinhole, mm. um, and it's not that difficult really, and you don't really have to worry that, for example, like these days, some films, your lovely films, are becoming discontinued because they stop producing them. Yeah. I'm talking about. Um, um, like Ilfords and Kodaks. And yes, yeah. yes, yes. And with wet plate, there is no risk like this. Basically, you will always have, you will always have these chemicals available That's what and I was just glass ask you about available. The chemicals. Is, yes. You, like okay, so you obviously know what particular chemicals to use then. Yeah. And then, do you just buy them as individual components? There are shops that are you know, with the chemicals and stuff dedicated to this That's technique. Brilliant. So you can buy a kit. You can buy. You know, equipment. So you the can moment. buy kits and stuff. Oh yeah, you can. Oh, that's yeah, cool. Yeah, because yeah. you can actually use any type of camera for this process. Okay. Uh, I took uh, photographs with 35 mil and wet plate. Oh. Camera, um, with wet 35 mil camera. But very very yeah, tiny. Like, wouldn't that be tiny? It is. It's a bit tricky to work with such a small uh, plate. <laughs> okay. That's true. But uh, medium formats, like you could yeah. use Holga, for example, because you work with quite um, corrosive chemicals. So I wouldn't really use your favorite camera. I would oh. go for a, something that you can spare. Really. Okay. Okay. So Good tip. Uh, yeah. So um, because the, these chemicals basically cause uh, corrosion. Uh, they are they are very. It's quite nasty chemicals, basically. Okay. <laughs> um, so Holga would be perfect because it's plastic, so you can just wipe it oh. off. You can go and get yourself a very uh, fancy, um, uh, well-maintained 19th century camera that can cost uh, a lot. Yeah. <laughs> uh, or you can experiment with Holga, for example. You don't really need any um, professional darkroom because the process is very, very slow. Uh, the, um, when you shoot with collodion, the ISO of collodion would be around one. One. Maybe three, if you're lucky <laughs> and you have a fresh, fresh mix. One. Yes. <laughs> So uh, they are not very sensitive. They're not very absorbent, <laughs> are they? No. What? Okay. So, uh, so if you if you if you've got just a room that you can you know um, you can you can put the blinds. Uh, yeah, so you can have it out anywhere you want. But yeah, it's not yeah, really. Yeah, as yeah. long as you're not under blistering no, sunshine, no, it's yeah, not yeah. going to get that yeah. affected. Yes, okay. Yes. And then you can just a normal uh, like a few trays, uh, darkroom yeah. trays. And, and then I suppose then there's the. Other obvious expense, like the glass. The glass, yes. Do you and have a glazier or someone that you know does bits like this, or do you just? Yeah, well, you, yeah, these are just uh, fr uh, framing um, clear oh, glass. Right. Yeah. You can also work with metal plates. Okay, cool. Um, uh, but this is like, like aluminiums and things aluminium, like that. Aluminium, lacquered aluminium. Yes. Okay. And uh, clear glass is my favorite material because you you are. You're creating something like a negative, really, mm. right? So in the 19th century, these images would be considered as a one-of-a-kind image. But today, with a modern photographic paper, mm. uh, you can uh, you can get a decent print from a negative like this. So you're literally putting that down on the photographic paper. You can make a contact print, or you can make an enlargement. Wow! If you've got an enlarger like this. Um, but yeah, contact, oh, so contact you, print. Yeah, so if you were to, if you had a big enlarger, you slot it in and you yeah. print from that. Yeah. Or yeah, you do a contact print by putting it directly down yes. onto the photographic paper. Yes, yes. Or you could just have it like that because that's really cool. Absolutely. Yes. <laughs> yeah, that's fantastic. So as well as portraits and then some fantastic still life, um, what what else is it that you do? Because I saw on your website you you really try your hand at everything, don't you? This um, some landscapes. I do work with uh, cyanotypes and um, cyanotype and Van Dyke brown printing, uh, and I do work with a little bit more modern technique that is called leaf printing, and it's um, uh, it's very close to um, regular black and white. Uh, darkroom printing it's mm. just there are different chemicals involved and it's a little bit more exciting and it's again a little uh, bit um, less repeatable so you don't have 
two prints exactly the same. Okay. You know, um, with with leaf printing, uh, you, you use uh, all this the same steps and as in, in black and white printing, but. Um, there is a um, very exciting the, uh, development moment when you have to decide a visual, by visual expe exp uh, inspection yeah. <laughs> uh, if that's the moment where you can snatch the print from. Oh, so you're from stopping it, it at you a, just in stop the developing... it immediately, yes. Oh, and just... what happens if you leave it for too long? It just goes over. You're watching the, the blacks, basically. When you're developing the print, you are watching your image and you uh, go as far as, um, as you want your darkest parts of the image to be. Yeah, it should be to as be. dark as they are. Yes, yes. and I also oh. print uh, landscapes um, taken on film with a uh, Holga camera. Uh, I, I print them with uh, leaf. Uh, it is giving me a very special um, moody um, yeah. um, characteristics of these landscapes because that, that's what I like. I don't like like a crispy, well lit um, sunny landscapes, you know. Yeah, so do you find when you're out shooting landscapes um, that you're almost seeing it as it is, but then applying all those techniques yes. on top of it in your head before yes. you shoot. Yes, yes, yes. It's a great yes. way to be looking at things, isn't it? <laughs> yes. Monica, I've had such a great time listening about um, why you do what you do, and it makes sense as why you love it so much. But if you don't mind sticking with me, I'd love to chat to you more about the technical side of stuff, about your camera and about the, the real in-depth process about, about all your printing and your wet plate techniques. Sure. No cool, problem. thanks. Thank you. Well, that's all we have time for in this episode, but join me again in the next episode as Monica's going to be chatting to us about all the processes involved in wet plate photography. If you want to brush up on your own photography skills, check out the Adorama Learning Centre, and if you want to watch more videos, then subscribe to our channel. Thanks, and I'll see you again soon.